friends. I'm glad to see you made it. For I'm gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God, he's alive. Today, my friends, you know, uh, I'd like to go over a little bit of chapters 5, 6, and uh, a little bit of chapter 7 uh, of 1 Corinthians. So if you want to join me in that, it's a great read. There's a lot of information there. Uh, things of talking about how to be a good steward. And a good steward of God's word is being trustworthy with uh, God's image, you know, God's holiness and, and His image. And that's the thing with our lives, you know. When we come to God, we sometimes people think, you know, oh, you, you, one of their fears is they don't want to come to God because they don't want to change or, or clean up their act. And, oh, it's too much trouble. I got to do all this stuff. And, you know, really... God does it for you, <laughs> and God removes that from you. You know, there are, without Jesus Christ, without the Spirit of God living with you and, and in you, or His His glory or manifestation of His unseen Spirit being a reality of our life and, and His presence being a reality in our everyday life. Like, He's there with you each and every day. And you can't hide from God because cause he's right there looking at you. But when he's a reality in, in your world, you know, he can removes the lust from you. If lust was your problem, if greed was your problem, he removes that from you. And it's not that, oh, I forgive you and now, you know, you, you continue, can continue living in greed or lustful ways. No, he, he removes that spirit that, that's been mastering or dominating over you. You know, and, and so that's the thing I want to talk about as we see here, you know, we in life. Sometimes we, we want the world to, to judge over us, right? But, but we, the believers of Jesus Christ, are, are the judges of each other, the judges of the world, you know, of the brother. So, why would we ever want to go to wicked people, unbelievers, to judge over us? Right? So when bad things come about, you know, or whatever, lawsuits, and a lot of it, and we see what we're talking here in this story, is sexual immorality. And why is sexual immorality such a, a violation against God? And I'll tell you that being molested as a child or being raped as an older woman, it's no different, and it's no different for this reason. It's a violation of your soul. You know, I can break my arm. That's a violation of my body. That hurts my body, and it can be healed. And after a few months and cast, and two years later, and you don't even remember your, your body was broken. Now, let's say you're, you're violated through your soul. That's something that you've got to walk with the rest of your life. And that's why it's so dangerous. And so when we ask about, you know, do we want to just keep taking these child molesters or, or pedophiles and, and throw them in jail and, you know, lock them away from society? Or we could do it like God and Jesus, as Paul's saying, you know, as, as I have fathered you in the gospel of Jesus Christ, father these other people in the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, imitate me. Instead of throwing them in jail, let's teach them how to be uh, uh, self-worth, how to be morally right. And how you do that is you got to get into the homes, you got to get into the children, so that they understand how to say no. They understand the difference between right and wrong. And through that, the empowerment and the encouragement to, to have a, a voice that, that uh, you know, can, can be heard without shame. Sometimes as children in that, we're, we're so powerless. And here in this world, 
We feel very powerless. So powerless we're sometimes willing to ask wicked people, unbelievers, pagans, to, to, to judge over us. And how's that working for us as a society? Not very good. Not very good. Because this thing with Jesus Christ, as we see, he is law and he is order. And Jesus come to take over dominion of this world. Take over dominion of the darkness. In other words, to put an end to it. And not just put an end to it, but, but forevermore put an end to it. To put death to that. And that's what we need to do. You know, uh, as a nation of people, you know, we can talk about putting the Word of God into schools and in the public schools and in these children all day long because it's a wonderful thing. But, but how are we going to do it? Well, one of the one great way you can do it is become a teacher, become one of those, a, a Christian who's willing to stand on their faith. Go into those places and be the teacher of those children and be able to equip them with tools, teachings, and instructions of a self-worth that cannot be matched here on earth by men and women other than those who are endowed with the Holy Spirit of God. And that's the problem. Men of the world most likely are walking under the Spirit of of like lust. Lust is the word desire. And not just desire, but a desire for something you know you can't have. <laughs> a desire to sin. And, it, and a love for it. And almost like that, that's your master. That means that's what controls everything of your day. And we can't have two masters. We need God to, to be master over us. So the sooner we get God to be master over our children, then you say, well, what, why those children? Because they are children of God. We don't want to deprive them of, of, of the grace, the gifts, and uh, the love God has to bring from them. You know, we don't want to see them as being unequal. We don't want to judge them for what they're doing because, you know, they're outside of uh, God's going to judge them. So we don't want to judge them. What do we want to do? We want to manifest God in their presence. You know, that's the thing. Through God being manifested in your presence, He will remove the spirit of lust, come and refill that spot with himself, with, with, with a love and, and eyes that can see children of the living God, daughters and, and sons of, of God. You know, it's, it's, well, I don't know, you talk about the Catholics and whether they're good or, or bad. And One thing they got, you know, they are a nation. They are a nation w which has law and order in that nation. And it's a worldwide nation. And they do have... Great power. Great power. You know, the Pope could come walk into Congress in front of the, the, the most powerful men on earth and, and say a little speech, and, and they just want to stand up and ah, I quit. Have so much power can, can have an effect on even the, the greatest men of, of the world. You know, in this Christian nation, where's your power? <laughs> Where's your power? And that's what Paul's saying. Why not take over dominion? <clears throat> take uh, uh, control over the authority God has given us. As God has given us the authority to create and make disciples of all nations, of all peoples. Right? And we need to see that as being a priority of our lives. And... One of the ways to do that is become that person. You know, just because you got a job at the at school and you're a Christian, and ah, you know, the law says, the wicked man's law says, we, we cannot talk about, pray over, or anything, or mention Jesus Christ in, in the school. And that's where it comes down to this question. <laughs> what do you value more? 
eternal life? Or their rules? The wicked man's judgment. The wicked man's rules. See, this fight is, is against not the flesh and blood, but against the rulers and principalities in dark places. Dark places. Right? In, in the spiritual realm. So, so the spirit of lust, that guy is controlled by it, got to be aware. How do we release him from that control that that's tormenting him? And, and how do we know it's tormenting him? Because he's lost so much control that he's willing to torture another human being. Another human being. Right? And that's the thing. When that's controlling your thoughts and your mind all day long, that's tormenting. <laughs> that could torment you. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's money and finances and being worried all the time about where's the next payment coming from because we've overspent our stuff, overspent our money to have lots of stuff. You know, that's the thing. Is what is controlling or mastering over us? And where are we going to find relief? Where are we going to find help and friendship? And that's through God's holy people. God's holy people. Us. Us. You know, we can either wait for them to do something, or we can just start doing something. <laughs> Take it upon ourselves to be unashamed of God's truth. God's truth. The only way we can put an end to, to the molestation and rape, hurt, and violence across America is by taking over dominion or authority in dark places, wicked places. And who's going to do that? Who's going to do that? You know, if we had the power and authority of the Pope, we walk right into Congress and they just lay down and I quit. I quit. Why? Because I can see the wickedness behind what we're doing. And I value my eternal life more than that. That's power. What is it? Why is it that we believe he has power, but we don't? We don't. <laughs> How is it we believe he has authority, but we don't? Pastors at church, leaders, congressmen, whatever. Why is it we always believe they have the authority, but, but we ourselves, the individual, have no authority? have no power. Right? Paul says the same power that rose Jesus Christ lives in you. You want to talk about power, authority, over wicked places and dark things, but we don't want to use it. You know, we don't want to use our authority. We don't want to use our power. Why? We're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid to stand on what we believe. Right? Their roles mean more than, than their salvation. You know, a lot of it, if you knew, all these children are being broken, hurt, molested, abused there in school. How are you going to help them by ignoring the problem? Kids 15 years old, 16 years old, same kids. We're going to ignore the problem until he walks into school and mows down his siblings, his peers. Right? And we see it all the time. There's a problem. There's such a problem of a loss of self worth that we don't even believe we're worthy. To live 
this life without guilt and shame. And I'll tell you how I know that's true. It's called insurance. <laughs> it's called health care. Insurance. You're so unworthy to receive it. You pay your, your money to a, an empty hole. And I'll tell you how it's an empty hole. People like me, all across America, paid into it for 20 years of their life and get nothing, not even one visit to the doctor. An empty hole. Because you don't believe you're, you're worth it. You don't believe that, that you have the power and authority. We, the people of the United States, run this country. We, the people of the United States, are God-governed. And every man, woman, and child in this country deserves to, the dignity to live without fear. Without fear. We pay in all that money to insurance companies because we're afraid. We're afraid. We're so afraid of the wicked man's judgment. We give out everything. Everything. To an empty hole. But for Jesus Christ, we won't even stand on our faith strong enough to be willing to pray for a child being abused back at home. In the school system. Right? We, the people of the United States, are, are so willing to send off our children to war, but we're not going to be willing to pray with them in the name of the one and only living God. Why? Why? Because God has such a powerful effect. The soldiers might turn and just walk right out of the army and screw it. You guys... Go beat yourselves up. We're done murdering, killing, and destroying. Because that's the power of the Holy Spirit. When He comes and rests on you, He removes the spirit that was controlling over you. Fear. Fear. In God is perfect love, and there is no fear. I don't am afraid of the wicked man's judgment, the man or, or your judgment. But I fear the one and only God who holds my life here on earth and my heavenly life in His hand. We fear Him. And through that, we're empowered. Because when we are weak, when there's a problem, when the nation is being destroyed, God doesn't want to help or influence the destruction. He wants to deliver you out of it. Deliver you out of it. You know, we in America think our riches justify our right to be on earth. To, to live and, and to die with dignity. Right? We're just animals today. And no other reason that then we chose to live under a wicked man's judgment and not under the, 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 the judgment of Jesus Christ, of God, of our own brethren. You know, why wouldn't we as Christians want to be the leaders of our community when we have grace and mercy and love living in us? Why not? Why not believe in the empowerment and the authority God has given us? Right? That's the thing. We, we want to change a kid's life. Empower them with the Holy Spirit. And they will grow up and give health care to the entire nation. Both rich and poor. Without penalty. Without cost without burdening you, without putting guilt and shame in you, without treating you like an animal. 
without the mark. See, that's what a mark is. So when, they, when they want to mark you, that that's identification. Identify. Brand. Like a cow. They brand cows and they brand horses and now they want to brand you. When you go vote, in this next election, you better be thinking one thing. Your eternal life's on the line. Your eternal life is on the line. Jesus Christ says, vote for me. Vote for, for God. And to be God governed. Ask Jesus Christ to, to rule over your life. And this nation will change. Take the authority God has given you. By standing up, go get that job in a dark, wicked place and stand on your faith. You can pray anywhere you wish, even in school, even for a broken child who needs the authority, the empowerment to tell somebody they're being hurt so that abuse can stop. That's what it's about. Right? And that's what he says. There's no greater violation to a human being on earth than sexual immorality. None. It violates the soul. An eternal soul made by God. It violates that. And we need to do something about it. We need to stand up and empower our children with the voice, the voice of God that gives you the power that rose him up from dead. God will rise us up in the last days, he says. That same power will rise up and change a nation. But you got to believe it lives in you. And you have the authority that God has given us to say to this world, we're worth more than a piece of paper. We matter. We matter so much. We want our health care. Even if that means taxing the food so that all men who eat receive the blessing. The blessing. God came to bless the earth, not curse it, not destroy it, but to bless it. Are we willing to receive the blessings God is waiting to restore to you? To restore to you. Satan brought death to this world, not God. Satan did. And then he wants to make you feel ashamed for what he did to you. Isn't that what all abusers do? <laughs> Isn't that what they do? That's Satan's work. And we want to put an end to the devil's work. But first, we got to believe we are worth more than paper. Paper. We used to be valued ourselves by gold and silver. Today, we're not even worth that paper. Paper has more authority over us than the living God that says to us, you matter. You're worth it. Stand up and tell them who you are. Tell them who you are. How are they going to know who you are? Jesus says, this is how they'll know who you are. This is how they'll know you are my sons and daughters. Because you love them. More than your own life. Because you're willing to lay down your life for a friend. That's how they'll know who you are. And when they know who you are, and when they see that you're willing to lay down your life for friends, they will turn back to Jesus Christ. 
because he loved us first. He loved us first. He didn't judge us. He loved us. He loved us enough to say to us, if you're willing, come to me. You guys work for things and food. But if you just come to him, all this stuff would be added to you. We got a whole nation of children living under a master of death and destruction. And how will they hear? How will they gain faith? How will they gain power? How will they gain self-worth? If they never hear about their father and his love for them, right? Didn't Jesus Christ say, didn't God say to Joshua, didn't I command you to be strong? Take courage. Be strong in the Lord. Take courage. It's a commandment of God. Be strong. In the Lord. Stand on your faith and live. Choose life. Everybody who loves Jesus Christ loves life. Believe you are worth more than a piece of paper. Stand on your faith. Stand up. See you next time.